I see you've accepted my offer of a refresher course in the art of detection, hmm? But perhaps you want to reacquaint yourself with the basics. Well, perhaps you wish to show off your skills. Or perhaps... Mom said we can't have dinner unless we humor you. Ah, well, in that case, let's get started, shall we? Yeah. What do we have here? A desk! Or is it? Maybe it's a robot disguised as a desk. Is there a desk under all that junk? Is that mahogany? No, wait, it's tea, isn't it? I bet it's tea. What is on the desk? A uh, pudding, pudding dish. dish. And what is significant about the pudding dish? It's smaller than the trough you usually use. It looks more like a fondue dish. It needs to go in the dishwasher? <sighs> the pudding dish is empty. A pudding. My pudding. Someone ate it, and you're going to tell me who did it. You're going to do so with the clues available to you in this office, the gallery, and the bathroom. And you're going to do it before dinner. That is to say, right now. Well, of course I ate the pudding. It's my pudding. Who else would have eaten it? What took you so long? Oh, that was easy. Yeah, what I meant to say is, uh, you made that look easy. Good job. Not everyone would recognize the significance of the golden spoon. You'll do well to keep an eye out for clues like that in future cases. Please excuse my earlier outburst. <laughs> I get cranky on an empty stomach. But you just ate ah, Speaking of which, it's dinner time. But tonight I bear dire news. I received an envelope in the mail from an old friend of the family, Mr. Valentine. The Shakespeare of crime. Indeed. What was in the envelope, Grandpa? A what? Ah, yes. Uh, a party invitation with a poem inside. And there once was a Seamus named Dickens, whose private eye kin were all chickens. Come Valentine's Day, the whole plan will pay. My plot, like a pudding, now thickens. A limerick? Sounds like an awesome party. Dorian, what are you going to do? I'm retiring as head of the Dickens Detective Agency. <gasps> Who are you and what have you done with my grandpa? Oh, I haven't changed, but Valentine clearly has. I'll let someone else foil his evil schemes from now on. Well, who's it gonna be? Eh? If you're retiring, one of us is gonna have to fill your shoes. Oh, 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 oh me, 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 Ah, yes, the matter of succession. What are my options? I could let my daughter run the place when she's not at school with her feds, or turn into a clearly insane child. Or ask my oldest sister and her muscle-headed husband to do it. Then, of course, there's my son, the Chow Hound. I'm right here. I guess that leaves me. You're far too young and inexperienced. But I... The, the... That's just the pudding talking. At any rate, you still haven't figured out how to work together as a team. Putting any one of you in charge would be a grave mistake. But who's going to run the Dickens Detective Agency? My dear wife? You are. What? what? Dorian, I really must protest. She's not even a detective. I'm not taking my marching orders from some old lady. Ow! Listen, when Valentine hears that I'm no longer head of the Dickens Detective Agency, he will assume I am no longer a threat. But in the back of his mind, he must know I am still out there watching. <laughs> Banana, my favorite. <laughs> um, there's also a note. What? Ah, yes. Roses are red, violets are blue. Who kidnapped your wife? Guess you don't have a clue. Oh, it's just as I feared. Valentine is unleashing his most villainous plot yet. He wants us to know we are powerless to stop him. You've got to do something. I'm retired. You're the detectives. You figure it out.
right, I did it. But what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Touché. Why'd you do it, Bilge? What did Valentine have on you? In the old days, I was quite the bodybuilder. Mr. Valentine put my talents to use. Always paid me handsomely, too. Not like here, but a bonus is coming pudding. So when he asked me to help him nab the old bird, I happily agreed. Where is she? Where is my mommy? <laughs> Hollow Point Express? That's the bullet train. Oh, I've heard about that. It's supposed to be rather speedy. It leaves tonight. Then let's get going. <laughs> they forgot their pudding. Mom's got to be somewhere on this train. Let's go have a chat with the engineer. Open up! This is an emergency! Hello! A coal-burning bullet train. That's progress. Uh-oh. Looks like he's out cold. Huh? Too soon? We need to find whoever did this. Who? Or what? I think you'll find when all is said and done that the conductor was a victim of Santa Claus. The only man on Earth known to carry a large supply of coal at all times when... Thank you. As I was saying, whoever did this must be working for Valentine. He never does his own dirty work. The train's moving too fast for them to jump off. They must still be aboard. Find the person who did this, and we might just find Mr. Valentine. And Grandma. Her too. Sounds rather circumstantial to me. It would never hold up in court. Well, you heard the lady. Might as well throw away all our circumstantial evidence. <gasps> no! Give me that, it's mine! What's a judge want with a golden egg? None of your beeswax! Is this circumstantial too? Looks more like a smoking gun to me. Okay, okay! I did it. All my life, I've used my hacking know-how to get what I wanted. Eggs, mostly. Anything egg-shaped. I love it. Valentine told me he'd give me a golden egg if I could hack into the train's computer and download the schematics to the engine. Everything was hunky-dory. Until the conductor found me. I couldn't get busted, so I had to improvise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a bad person. Yeah, I'm just an egghead. No jury would ever convict you. You really think so? No, that was sarcasm. Look it up. You're going down. Hiya! Stop! Well, this is the aquarium where Valentine met the judge. Let's review what we know so far. Right. Anyone got any ideas? Right. Holy cheese! You, the manatee? From the three manatee tenors? <gasps> For real? You're from the Dickens Detective Agency, aren't you? Yeah, I've seen you on TV. Who sent you? Was it Hugh's manager? The insurance company? His wife? His ex-wife? What are you talking about? You! What about me? Not you! You! Him? What about me? Hugh the manatee is missing! <gasps> he got in this morning, we put him in the tank, which was set up to his exact specifications. Half an hour ago, I walked past, and he's gone! You have to find him! We're kind of on a case already. That can wait. This is Hugh the manatee we're talking about. I have all his records. Hearing him sing the banana boat song changed my life. It's a song. Can he really sing? It's more like a whistle or a very melodic belch. Hugh is the only one of the three manatee tenors who still has a career. He may be the only singing manatee left. He's a national treasure! A treasure, huh? Something tells me Valentine is wrapped up in this somehow. 
We'd better find the third manatee. You might have gotten away with it if you hadn't been so careless with your sea salt, Miss Wigwam. That was your slip-up. What could you possibly know? You're just a child. Mom? I'm on it! I give up. I did it. Where is he? If you hurt one hair on his big squishy head, so help me. We probably should have noticed that earlier. But why, Miss Wigwam? Why would you jeopardize a lucrative teaching career to kidnap a manatee? I did it. For love. Aww. All my life, I've been alone. Then I started getting letters from a secret admirer. He said he needed me to still hew the manatee from the aquarium, and then we could be together. Okay, that's just weird. Now I'll never get to go on my cruise with Mr. Valentine. That's how he always signs his notes to me. Together we'll sail across the sea once you've abducted that famed manatee. Looks like you're going to jail. And we're going on a cruise. Do I know you? I'm Captain Sherman. Welcome to the SS Stupendous. And I am the infamous Ted Riddle. I warn you, Captain, do not ask me to divulge my secret identity for all... <laughs> Uh, Captain, we're actually on important business here. We're tracking a missing person. And a criminal mastermind. And a missing manatee. Well, let me put your minds at ease. We have absolutely none of that on board. This ship is about fun, relaxation, and good old-fashioned nautical hijinks. Do you have a ballroom? No. A rock climbing wall? No. Pilates studio? No. Is there anything else you don't have? Funny you should ask. The anchor seems to have disappeared. Couldn't stop the ship if I tried. Oh, is that all? Steering wheel's gone too. How are you steering the ship? I'm not. How can you prevent it from running aground? I can't. Doesn't that bother you? Bother me? I'm on a cruise. Well, that's reassuring. We should find out where those missing items went. A ship's wheel and anchor? Who would even want that? I cannot believe you would accuse me while my ship's going down. Are you going down with it, Captain? We know you stole those parts. Well then, plan B. You may not know my secret identity. It's Rudyard, right? You may not know my secret identity, but I think I know yours. General Mission! Yeah, that's right. I'm me, and I helped Valentine heist all that stuff from this ship. I've known Valentine for a long, long time. Valentine asked for some ship parts. I arranged to get him some ship parts. I would have done it for free, just for the fun of being evil, but Valentine pays well, real well. And how did Valentine pay you? Opera tickets! That makes sense. You can't afford that kind of extravagance on a general salary. This particular performance is going to be special. That's what Valentine said in his note. Come see me at the Opera House. We'll see a great soprano. And when the final curtain falls, so does the grand piano. Man sure knows how to party. Plan C, hop! He's a very good swimmer. I find his ability middling at best. You really think we'll find Valentine here? This may be his secret lair, his den of evil, his fortress of turpitude! Take a look at this. She looks familiar. You always say that. Listen. Actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What can you tell us about the victim, ma'am? His name is Toots McTeague. He plays lead flute in the orchestra. He likes long walks on the beach, expensive hair care products, and me. We are going to be married someday. Once he gets over his fear of commitment. 
Yeah, guys can be funny about that. He's a good man and a brilliant musician. Really? Seems like he'd be a little flat. Too soon? Toots McTeague, I'm left fatigued by your incessant meddling. Tit for tat, I'll leave you flat. You should have stuck to fiddling. Valentine. He was a flautist, not a fiddler. He didn't deserve this. Why would Valentine attack a flautist? That's what we're gonna find out. You've cooked your own goose this time, my dear. This is your recipe book, is it not? These recipes are terrible. Valentine pudding. Who would eat that? Phoebe. What did you see in our toots? Why did you leave me? I didn't want it to end like this. Toots used to be my main squeeze, but then he found out about my paramania, and he dumped me for Griselda. Valentine told me we'd drop the piano on her, and I believed him. Oh, Toots, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Ten points. Danke for bringing Toots' attack into justice. I have the reward for you. Valentine, I know his true identity. Valentine is really... Oh. Quick, grab that anchor. the ship. Valentine is still aboard. You're not safe. Valentine's here? Yes. And this whole ship is dangerous. Valentine's got it loaded with some kind of gas. Helium? Hydrogen? Mustard? Man, I could use a bagel dog. No, it's something he concocted himself. He calls it love gas. Inhale too much of it and who knows what you might do. Love gas? Be serious. I am serious. Anyone who breathes it becomes extremely emotional and susceptible to suggestion. Imagine what the Shakespeare of crime could do with that. If he has his way, everyone will fall in love with Mr. Valentine. Especially the Commodore. And if everyone loves Valentine, then no one will be able to stop him. We need to find Valentine before he releases the gas. Mom, can you take you somewhere safe? I think there's a hot air balloon we can use to escape. We'll try to find it. This. Kid Riddle to the rescue! Bagel dog, here I come. We shut down your love gas plot, Dr. Harvest. Or should we call you Valentine? Valentine? I'm afraid you've mistaken me for someone else. I'm good, but I'm not that good. I was a young internist when I first met Mr. Valentine. He... Well, let's just say he wanted to advance the cause of medical science. Mr. Valentine's donations have advanced the cause of medicine for years, to say nothing of my own career. So, when he told me he needed some experimental gases for a Zeppelin, I didn't ask questions. I just got a bunch from the lab. What kind of doctor are you exactly? I don't believe in labels. That's why I quit med school. Oh boy. Mom, what are you doing here? It's not safe. You can say that again. Looks like someone forgot to turn off the gas. Grandma, how did you and Hugh escape? I cut us free... with this. I found it in the hangar. Get us back to Dickens Manor, Hugh. 
We've got a dinner date with Mr. Valentine. What took you so long? We were unavoidably detained. But you know all about that, don't you, Mr. Valentine? It took us a while to connect the dots. The pudding ingredients, the egg, the vial of vanilla extract, the golden spoon and dish. Don't forget the nautical things, the cruise ship, the manatee hunt, the mermaid opera. Only you would know that sailors used to mistake manatees for mermaids. So you managed to kidnap one of three manatee tenors in the whole world before you lured us to the mermaid opera. Did you think I'd miss that? Kidnapping Hugh the manatee was low, man. Real low. And what about that train engineer and that flautist? Those people have lives and families and crazy Viking women who love them? Yeah! That, that's the only part of this puzzle that Kid Riddle couldn't unravel. Why did you do it, Grandpa? Why would the world's greatest detective become the world's greatest villain? You still don't get it, do you? I'm not Valentine. Our clues say otherwise. Do they? Let's see your clues. None of those clues prove a thing. If you really think you can unmask Mr. Valentine, you'll need to build a full case. And you better do it quickly, because the police are on their way. Grandma? You're Mr. Valentine? Uh, don't, don't be preposterous, Rudy. But the clues don't lie, Grandma. <gasps> it's true. Dang. I think I'm going to be sick. Mom, why'd you do it? Because you all ran off and became detectives, chasing around after your father, grandfather, brother-in-law. It wasn't bad enough losing a husband to his job. I had to lose my whole family. You don't know what it's like to be left alone. You're a team. You've always had each other. So I had to make my own friends, and I gradually realized that I could be a part of your lives in a different way, by creating the crimes you fought, being the yin to your yang. The sour to your sweet. The old yogurt and a sweaty gym sock to our triple cheeseburger bomb to get a deluxe meal? Something like that. But why all this? The manatee, the flautist. Do you know what today is? No, of course you don't. It's February the 14th, our wedding anniversary. Don't feel too bad. Your father didn't remember either. Now, just a moment. I did not forget anything. Do you have any idea the lengths I go to for you? Why, if you weren't out trying to be the world's greatest criminal all the time... Nonsense! You... I had a whole blimp constructed for the occasion. I kidnapped a famous singing manatee. I had oh, bullet train tickets, opera manatee. tickets, cruise tickets. It was going to be the best second honeymoon ever. And do you care? I didn't have to kidnap anybody. I sought out two of them with my detecting skills that have put a roof over your head these last 42 years. 43 years! No, you don't care. All you care about is pudding. Do you know how much we spend on pudding every year? I could build a fleet of zeppelins if I had... Wait a minute. Two manatees? <sighs> yes, yes, two manatees. Pickles and chooch from the three manatee tunnels. I know they're your favorites, so I went out and got them for you. Because I love you. Aww. Aww. I don't believe you. Why don't you go out to the gallery and see for yourself? nuts, right? Which part? All of it, but mostly the whole crime spree to get your attention part. Well, my dear, you can't be married to an insane criminal genius for 42 years 43 and years! Without becoming aware of it. Unfortunately, to prove she was Valentine, I had to let her think she was safe, so I could collect the evidence that would put her away for good. That's where you came in. But what about all that stuff you said about none of us being capable? Yes, well... It's what we in the business refer to as a, a lie, my dear. Indeed, I have absolute confidence that any one of you could take over for me when I retire. Not that I plan on ever doing that. 
of course. She looks so happy. It's hard to believe she's a pathological maniac. Trust me, Phoebe dear. In this business, the true nutcases are always in lurid costumes. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, get it down! Get it down! Get it down! Oh, oh, oh I'm oh, sure it's yeah. just a phase. Ta-ta! 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 Woman, I love you. Uncle Max, who's going to be our arch nemesis now that we caught Mr. Valentine? Do not care. Investigate the where and why and who don't hesitate. You know what you must. 